uh, it's a fact that not all roses arriving on the market are uh, fragrant. Uh, so we want to understand why some roses are fragrant and why others are not. And for this, we are studying genes that makes the scent, and we want to understand how this scent is uh, synthesized, is made in the, in the petals of the, of the rose. We started by analyzing the, the scent molecules. Scent is formed by hundreds of uh, volatile uh, small molecules in the petals, so it's quite complicated. But there are major uh, compounds in this uh, scent, and uh, these major compounds are called monoterpenes. In other plants, we know how they are made. We know that there are uh, very uh, typical, very specific enzymes called terpene synthase that make these compounds in other plants, for example, in mint, etc. In rose, we looked for these uh, enzymes, but we didn't find them. We were unable to demonstrate that the rose was doing like the other plants. We had to take another approach, and what we did uh, was to compare two roses very close. They are both red. One is the grandmother of the other one. And one is highly fragrant and the other one is not. And we found that there is one particular gene which is really highly, highly functional, highly expressed in the petals of the fragrant rose. And this gene is a nudix hydrolase. From then, we wanted to know if this gene was really linked to the scent and we looked at it in other roses, of course, about 10 different roses, and we saw that every time this gene was expressed highly, the rose was making these uh, monoterpene uh, molecules, was making the scent. So we were really surprised about this. What we could uh, do to help readers would be to help them to select very early what roses in a progeny is, uh, will be fragrant, even before the flower is, uh, is here. So it, it, this gene could be used as a marker of scent.